Yes, uh, we are going to share the word of God uh, this afternoon and we are going to pray together. And I believe that as we are praying, uh, God will reveal uh, himself uh, to us. Uh, and the scripture I want to share, the scripture I want to start with, uh, it's taken from... Uh, uh, the scripture is taken from, uh, I'll share the scripture in so that we can all see together. We are going to talk uh, starting from uh, Psalm 98.4 and then I will read that I will, and then we'll share two more scripture and then we'll pray together. I will send the scripture in the chat so that we can read all together. Psalm 90, 98 verse 4. The Bible said to us, And the scripture said to us, the uh, King James Version, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praises. Father, we thank you. We bless you for your word. We receive this word you give to us. We receive uh, this word that you gave to us. We believe, oh yes, we believe. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Thank you, Jesus, for your power. All glory to the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Yes, again, Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year. Yes, uh, yeah. And let me just remind someone that this service, as we do it online, uh, you can share the link up to someone. I saw some link as well. That's why I joined the service today. I saw a link from Mark. I saw a link from other people. I saw some link. That's why I click on the link A and I came to the service. Glory be to God. And as I came to the service, I'm the one speaking today. Glory be to God. Amen. So you can share it to other group. You can share it with your friend. They will also join us and we worship the Lord together. Yes, uh, as we are reading. Uh, from Mike, Mark 90, uh, 98 verse 4. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord or the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praises. Yes, this is like also a commandment from God. It is Jehovah God who is asking us to make a joyful noise. It's, uh, and even um, it's not only you see then, then it's not only for the church. It is for the all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praises praises yes because uh, it is something uh, that is very important for god also god uh, want us to make joys to make a noise and he want us to make noise and as we're making those noise uh, he want them also to become joyful and there is something special with the noise that we make there are something uh, very special there is a mystery in the sound that comes from our voice. There is a, a mystery that comes from the sound. Because, like, a, for example, the first thing that you realize when a person is sick, when a person is sick, the first thing that go out is the voice. That's why you see when somebody, oh, the person has a headache, oh, I have, I have a headache, I'm not able to talk. But they think the attack is against the head. But you, the person will say, no, I'm not able to speak because I have a headache. And even if the smallest toe is paining the person, and the person, you will see it in the voice of the person. When uh, you are used to talk to people, when uh, you are interested in people, when you love people, especially the people you love, and when you talk to the person, just from the voice, you will know that something is not right. Just from the voice, you will see that, yeah, something is happening. Why? Why is the voice connected to our life in, the, in a such way? It's because our voice also is connected to our identity. That's why someone can call you on the phone before even uh, the person say, any, uh, say that, yeah, this is uh, Dr. Coco calling you. But as soon as I call, even if there's no number, I say, hello, how are you? You know it is me. If you are my friend, if you are connected to me. Because uh, the voice, in a voice, there is an identity. And this is why the Lord, our God, wants the voice to come to us. Yes, yeah, sometimes I know, sometimes especially uh, in a big country like uh, um, where we are, all of us, I, I, I presume this evening, this afternoon, in UK, we, we are we are in a way like, uh, yes, uh, I can come to church, uh, I can be in church, uh, but I still want to stay to remain English, I still need to remain, uh, you know, uh, gentleman, and I'll be like, 
I pray in my heart. Yeah, my prayer, my prayer is uh, only for me and my God. My prayer is a uh, special. Just uh, yeah, mind your business. I mind my business. And I'm talking only to God. I don't want anyone to hear my prayer. My prayer goes straight to God. Yes, there's no problem with that. Because uh, you can do that in a, as much as you can do that. And then I will encourage you also to do it when you go to McDonald's. Also, when you go to McDonald's, you say, yeah, my command is only for me and for God. I don't want anyone to hear my command. Yes, glory to God. Now that we can come and press the button. Go and do it as well at the restaurant, especially go and do it also when you are watching uh football when is france playing argentina when all those teams are playing just do the same thing yeah me watching football is for only me and my heart i'm watching football in my heart i will not scream i will not shout i will not do any other stuff that's when the things happen because like uh, when you come to god you are all gentlemen you cannot open your mouth you cannot praise god when it's time let us pray yeah i'm praying in my heart let us sing I'm singing in my heart. Yes, uh, yo, yo, when uh, it's something, uh, let us jump. I'm jumping in my heart. And if uh, you can do all those stuff, it's good to do it. But if uh, you go to McDonald's and then you say, I want a Big Mac. And then only if your voice can only be heard when uh, you are at the McDonald's. Then that's, that's a big problem. If your voice can only be heard when uh, Arsenal is playing against Chelsea, then there's a big problem. If your voice can only be heard, I don't know where you want your voice to be heard, then we have a problem. And because of that, the Lord will resist you also. Yes, God resists people. When you go in the book, you will find a place when they will show you really that, yes, God resists people. The same way we behave toward God. That's the same way, yeah, God will become also a kid. He behaves the same way toward us. The one of the scriptures is saying this. Everything you do to the governor, the governor in your country, make sure you do it to God even more. If uh, like mo most of the time we say uh, when the king, if, uh, if you are in church, the king uh, just come and then you stand and you jump. Make sure in the day when God will come, you will jump. If uh, every time on Sunday when we come, God, now the presence of God here, yeah, yes, God, the presence of God, I, I will reflect it in my heart. Make sure the day when the king of the country will come. Make sure that you do the same in your heart. B because if you forget, when the king come, King Charles, or any of the governor in the country come, you forget to do it in your heart. And then you, we see you jumping all around. Then there is a problem. That is what, that's in fact what God calls a judgment. Because God will judge you the way you are judging. And God will never judge us according to his judgment because that would be hard on us but then god will judge us according to what uh, uh the way we are judging and i will read um i will return to the judgment with another i'll tell another story and then we'll go back to the judgment and uh, one of the women we had a program as we had the program on uh, friday one of the uh woman who spoke give us a testimony because also we was talking about making noise uh, for jesus she gave us a testimony uh they live in Milton kings as we live in Milton uh before uh, Milton Kisa, it was just, uh, I think, uh, I don't know what it was, but it has to become a all uh, community, and the queen had to come, and all they, uh, they call all the community to come and represent, and then to be together as the queen will pass, and everybody will um, salute the queen. And as the queen was passing, because they were standing with the community, with the Congolese community, and they were singing, they were singing, pray. so it was a time of singing, they were singing, praising God for the life of the queen. That's why we sing, God save the queen. We are praising God for the love of the queen, because it is God who can save. So they were singing praise to God, worshipping the Lord. And when they, and the men, especially, she, she talked about the men uh, originally from Congo, they always, they always love dressing, never shout, never sing, always proud. Stay in the back. But because the queen was passing, because the queen came, and because the queen was so, uh, she, uh, the singing of the community attracted her, she looked to us, was the people. The men 
had to come to jump uh, to pass in front of the woman. They had to remove the jacket and to make noise for the queen. For the queen to see how they were making noise. And that, yeah, it is a good thing. Yeah, the queen could have seen that and say, oh, I'm so happy for you. But God will be upset. Because they, if uh, you are able to give that to a person on earth, you must do it more ever for God. That's, that's the Bible. The, I'll, I'll go back to the judgment of God and then we'll go back uh, to talk more about, about the making noise. So that this can enter into someone's heart. So that this can be a blessing to someone's life. You will see that the story of David. When uh, David uh, uh, did uh, the thing with Bathsheba, David uh, committed a big sin. And as he committed a sin, uh, and he killed a person. And uh, it, it went on. He went, he prayed, he covered himself, and then boom, boom, boom. One day, a prophet came to David. And when the prophet came to David, uh, he didn't say, David, you do this. No, the prophet said that David, King David, there is a man in your country. There is a man in your kingdom. Listen to what a man did. And the prophet told him what a man did in the country. But David didn't know that the man that the prophet was talking about was him. And the prophet asked David, what do you want a such man? What do you want to happen to the man? Because you are the king. The king is the one who make a judgment. So then the prophet Nathan asked David, what do you want us to do to the man who did uh, this bad thing? And uh, David said, the, the person who did that is so bad. The, that person is a bad person. Bring him out. I will kill him myself. Because he was thinking that is another person. Then the prophet told him, David, the person who did a bad thing, it is you. Because God gave you so many wives. It was a story about a wife. It is in the, in the Bible. If you need the scripture, I'll give you the, the verse where the whole story is told. And the prophet told David, the bad person is you. Because you went, you kill a person for a wife. Because God gave you so many wives. If you wanted another wife, God could have had another wife to you. But... You went and you kill a person because you've done that. And you, you, the king, you say the person has to die. But God has forgiven you. But, but still, something will happen in your family. I hope somebody is following me. This is the judgment of God. See, God didn't judge David. David judged himself. And the, that judgment was based on poor crazy that's what the judgment and this is how god gonna judge the earth this is how god in the end this is how god gonna judge the whole earth god will not stand and say okay now i'm gonna judge you people no everyone will judge himself you will come there you god will ask you so the person has done this and done this. you say god let let us through this person to hell god will tell you that's you go to hell if you say oh god let us mercy on this person that is you have mercy the judgment will be made with grace for everyone who judge somebody else with grace the judgment will be made with mercy for everyone who judge everyone else with mercy and there shall not be mercy for those who will not give mercy and the judgment of god come to our heart and that was a part of uh, touching a little bit on Making noise for God and even making the noise uh, that is joyful. And those noise uh, are not made in a way like, they are not made in a way like, oh, I'm making noise for God because God needs my noise. No, 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 no. Yes, sometimes when we make those noise, we think that, yes, I'm making noise. God needs my noise. And then after you realize that God doesn't really, 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 really need a nose, but we are the one who need our own, we need our own nose. We need it ourselves. Every time you are praising God. Yes, yeah, sometimes it looks like I am worshiping God 
for God to become big. No, God is already big. If you, if you decide that, okay, as for me today, I will not praise him. The, that is in the Bible. God can create people from stone and those stone will praise him. So if you say, okay, I don't feel like praising God, someone else will come and praise God. If you say that uh, this is not for me, somebody else will come and will become from him. Now, as I was speaking about sickness, if somebody is sick, even if uh, the smallest toe of the person is hurting that person, and you can hear it in the voice, then it becomes that. The voice uh, is your authority because if your voice is your identity, your voice uh, is linked to your authority because your, you are your identity. You, your authority is in your identity. The person you are is linked to your voice and your identity is linked to your voice. Your authority and your power is in your voice. That is why when sickness comes into a person's life, the voice has to go out because every sickness comes against the voice. Every sickness comes against your identity. Every sick, Everything that comes against you Come against your identity. And everything that comes against your identity, your identity, come against your voice. Your voice, your identity is the way even when we vote, when we go voting, they, when they call it, they call that the voice of the people. So your decision is your voice also. And when you are speaking, it is you, your identity will speaking. That's what the Bible said to us. We will be judged by what we say. Now, your authority is in your voice so that for sickness to remain in you, if a sickness comes against you, for that sickness to really remain in you, your voice has to come out of the system. Your voice has to come out of the system. Before I say, I speak to the next story, I want us to read the, uh, the scripture and then I'll, I have a story that's coming to me. The second scripture is taking us from Joshua 6.16. This is the story when uh, the children of Israel had to go around uh, the wall of Jericho. The children of Israel, they had to go around the wall. They had to go around the wall for seven days. They had to go around the wall. And on the seventh day, that's why they had to go around the wall seven times. And this is where we have the scripture, Joshua 16. Joshua commanded. It become a commandment is a commandment. He commanded the army. Oh, yes. Shout for the Lord has gave you the city. Is somebody with me this afternoon? You will see that Joshua is commanding the army. Oh, yes. I will return to that. Let me tell that story because I believe that story is important for somebody. And then I will return to the scripture. This is the story. There was a boy. As he was born, as he was born, he was he has this uh, behavior of saying, "I will die when I am forty. That's what he used to say. You 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 just playing around, say, "Oh, I will die when I'm forty. I will die when I am forty. I will die when I'm forty. And when uh, he got to 38, 39, the boy became sick. 39, the boy was in coma. And he was in coma, he could not speak again. So this is a story that a pastor is giving us a testimony. Now they call the pastor, big pastor. Yeah, because they are big, big pastor. They are pastor, when you look at you, you are healed. There are some pastor, when you just look at you, you are healed. There are pastor, when he eats he, take, he give you his plates. You eat in the same plate. Every sickness in your body run away. That's where I am going in the name of Jesus. There are some pastors when um, he take anointing oil. Jesus is the Lord. And then the pastor came and prayed for that boy. Nothing. He came and prayed for that boy. Nothing. He came and prayed for that boy. Nothing. And they have to stop. God told him. Then he asked God, what's happening? Why my stuff are not working? God had to tell him, go and ask the family. The pastor told them, mom, I've prayed for your child and something is blocking my prayer. I don't know what. And the mom said, oh, this boy 
from from the time I was baby used to say that I would die when I'm 40. I would die when I'm 40. He's 39 now. I think that's what is happening. And the Lord and the pastor say, yes, that is why he's dying. Because uh, he's in coma, he's not able to stop uh, that saying. Because he was saying, because when he was saying, he was he was voting. He was accepting. He was casting his vote. That was his identity. Now it was his coma. That voice was gone. Because you say yes and you say no. That voice was gone. So for a pastor to remove that, himself as first to come and say, I refuse to die at 14, then the pastor can pray for you, for it to be. But if you yourself, you say, oh, I'm going to die at 40, even Jesus himself cannot help you. I repeat, if yourself, you say, I will die when I'm 40, Jesus himself cannot help you. Before Jesus can help you, you have to say, Jesus, forgive me. Before Jesus could help you, you have to say, Jesus, save me. This is the reason of prayer. This is the number one reason of prayer. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the, that's New Testament. And the person, the, the, our brother in the New Testament asks us, so how can we be saved if they don't call? How can they call if nobody tells them how to call? That's why prayer becomes important. Not only prayer, that's why somebody teaching you how to pray becomes important. So if somebody is teaching you how to pray and you are big, I am too big. You cannot teach me how to pray. That's your own problem. Because when Jesus was, Jesus was a good preacher. He was preaching, preaching, preaching. They never listened to his preaching. Jesus Christ was a big preacher. He was preaching, preaching, preaching. They never, Jerusalem, never listened to his preaching. And Jesus Christ has to sit and look at Jerusalem and say, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. You're going to have fire. The stone in Jerusalem, they're going to break that. The wall of Jerusalem, they're going to break it. The temple of Jerusalem, they're going to burn it. Why? Because they didn't listen to his preaching. So, when we're talking, when a man of God is standing to, to, in front of you to speak to you, when you are not listening, when you say, I'm not listening, those stuff are not for me, that is your problem. According to the Bible, when God sent a prophet, it doesn't mean that God wants to, to, it doesn't mean, I do this, this is mean quote. It doesn't mean that God wants only to heal that person. No, 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 no. It doesn't mean that. When God sends a prophet, it's both. It can go both ways. It's not oh, a prophet because like when we come at the end of the year, oh, people say to people like, go if your pastor told you that you get married. And if you're not married, go and ask your pastor. No, 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 no. Go and ask yourself. Because the pastor can stand on the pulpit on the 1st of January and say to you, you are getting married this year. You are getting married this year. You are getting married this year. Yes, it doesn't change the rest of the Bible. The Bible doesn't stand on that one only key. You are getting married this year. No, no, no. There are so many stuff in the Bible that all of them, not all of them, but some of them. Okay, I will be nice. At least two of them. At least, at least the two of them need to be to be there so that they think that the prophet of God said to you, come to be. So what does the prophet come to say then? Yeah, it is the, there is a commandment also from God that come on the prophet. That you have to say what I say to you. That's what God came and said to the prophet. You prophet, I am sending you. Go and say what I've told you. And the prophet has to come and say what they say to him. What God said to him. So if the people obey, glory to God. If the people refuse, that's the problem. But if the prophet come and say a word, and the person refuse the word, when the person die, God will not ask the prophet. When, uh, so when I'm talking about a, a prophet, so it even... It does say, oh, this is, no, 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 this is not only for, like, pro, what we call prophet. No, 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 no. Even um, an evangelist is a prophet. Even uh, a doctor is a prophet. A prophet, prophet in church is a prophet, prophet with the word of God. An apostle is a prophet. A pastor is a prophet. And then when you, you can jump to that way and say, hey, 
even your own mom, sometimes when she stands to speak to you the word of God, she become a prophet. Now, when a, a prophet, now, when the prophet come and give the word, that's what is the word of God. If you obey, you will be blessed. If you refuse, that's your problem. If a prophet doesn't take the word, God said, you prophet, go and give this word. If the prophet doesn't go and give the word that God gave to him, then if something bad happened to those people, then it is the moment that God will come and ask the prophet, you prophet, why you didn't go and give the word I gave to you to the, to the people? That's when God will come and ask the prophet. And when the prophet gives his word, I have given the word, I have said what God gave me to say. I can go and sleep in peace. It's now those people to deal with what God has said to them. Is somebody following me this uh, afternoon? Yes, and for that, then I'm jumping to the place of the scripture in the same uh, Joshua, Joshua 6. And I want us to see how a, the prophet Joshua put it to the people. Joshua 6. And uh, the, old, the old story is uh, in, the, in the book of Joshua. You can read it, uh, com the complete story. You can, re you can see that. Joshua 6, 16. Joshua commanded. See, that's why I wanted I, I touch, I went a little bit to touch on the prophet, on the prophetic side. So that I can go, so that your ear will be open to what Joshua is saying to the people. And now you will see that Joshua is commanding. That become not the commandment of God. And then, it's not only commanding. See, you see, you see uh, I want you somebody, I hope somebody catch the error I made. I just for making an error. And I, I, I hope somebody did catch that. And as I was speaking, and I, I said that, and then Joshua commanded the people. But you will see that in the scripture itself, they say that Joshua commanded the army. See, that's the big difference. That, that's, what, that's the big difference of the story. Joshua commanded the army. Now, on the day when you say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. It is the day you enter to the army. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. We prefer not to be it in the army. I know. Me too, I went in the, me too, when I went to church, I said, oh, I've come to church to come and sleep. And then they say, oh, you have come to the army. I say, oh man, if I knew, I would have not come. Yeah. We call it, most of the time when we call it church, that's why we, dis, we destroy it even. It's not church, only church, church. No, it is an army. Now, why it is an army? When you join the army, they cut your hair. When you join the army, they cut your hair. When you join the army, they teach you another language. Why? If they don't cut your hair when you join the army, if they don't teach you another language, you will die. When you join the army, they cut your hair. Now, I don't know if anyone has seen any adverts about the army, especially here in England, on BBC and almost all the stuff. Sometimes there, there are those adverts about the army that, that come on. Online versus the army, and you see them with guns, well dressed, nice. Some of them with flying stuff, Ooh, so beautiful. They don't show the training part, they never show the training part. They never show that when you join the army, they cut your hair, and it is very special. It is very special because the civilian. They have a different set of hair. The hair you have as a civilian can kill you. When you're a civilian, your hair is everywhere. Your hair brasho krenda boshindara. Now, when you are at when you go to war, when you go to war, sometimes you need to pass and stuff. And if you have bad hair, your hair can catch into something and you die. I pray for somebody. Catch 
the revelation. I pray for somebody. Catch the revelation. I pray for somebody. Catch the revelation. Preaching doesn't enter because of the preacher. Preaching enter because of the person who wants to hear. That's how preaching works. If you want to hear, you will get it. And if you say, oh my God, what the man of God is saying is so, I don't know. But I pray for your anointing over my ear. Let me cut the revelation and it will enter. I pray for somebody. Somebody, the person say, oh man, I want to get this. And I pray for you, let, let you get it in the name of Jesus. When you go to the training, they take everything you are wearing, everything your father gave to you, Everything your mother gave to you, they take it, they threw it. They give you a uniform. When you join the army, they give you the uniform. The uniform, I know it looks cute. It is not supposed to look only cute. The uniform is full protection. The uniform you see soldier wearing has been designed that when you go to war, the enemy might not see you. When you are wearing the uniform, the enemy, you are, you are in the jungle. The enemy might miss you. The enemy will look at you. They will think they are seeing flowers. That's the reason first the uniform you see is green. Because most of the fights happen in jungles. There are trees, there are this, there are that. Wearing the uniform will keep you safe. And you will see a big army as the United States. When they go to fight in the desert, they don't wear the greens. No, 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 no. They wear the khakis. Because they know that they will be in the sand. Especially when, if you look some video, the uh, when they went to Iraq, when they went to the other one in, in, with the Taliban's, they were not wearing the greens. They were wearing those that look like khakis. Because with the khakis, stay, you will be protected just by lying in the sand. The enemy, they can fly, they will not see you. This is the reason of the uniform. Now, if you join the army, you say, I am too cute. When uh, the commander is giving the uniform, you say, no, I'm too cute. I am going to wear what my mother gave to me, what my father gave to me. You will die. I repeat, if you go to the army and you say, I am going to wear my suit because this suit is from uh, Armani. I look good in Armani. Yes, the suit can be Armani. It can be Versace. If you wear it, you go with it to war, they will kill you. I am saying to somebody, church is not a fancy place. I know when somebody came and give you the gospel, they say to you, come to Jesus and all your problems will run away. Come to church and you'll be heaven. Yeah, I know. That's what they told to me. I came to Jesus as well. It is, and it's also so, but it is not so because the church is a army. The church is a army. The church is a army. Now, in army, it is not a civilian business. I know. That is why some people, when they come to church, they prefer to stay at the back. Oh, yes. You can stay at the back. You can say the stuff doesn't interest me. And you will not grow. That's where, that's, where the, that's where the difference between the baby in the church and the grown-up in the church. The calling of God for the entire church. This is for the whole church. It is to grow and to become mature soldier in the army of God. Because there is a kingdom to win. There is a war to fight. There, there are people going to hell. 
Oh yes, that's because those are the reason. Those are God will not come from heaven to preach the gospel for somebody. No, 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 no. God is not coming. He came. He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus, to come and preach the whole gospel on earth. He's not coming again. Jesus is not coming again. Okay, I've come again. Let us go to Forest Hill and preach the gospel. Let us go to Ilford and pray. And then Jesus will be in the front and will be following and will be like, Master, should I love my brother? No. Oh, yes. Oh, Master. No, no. Jesus is not, Jesus is not going to do with that. No, and, then we, we will, and then they will see us and Jesus on the motorway. On M25, or they will see us and Jesus on um, on Jubilee Line. We are going to West Ham to preach the gospel, and Jesus is the master, is in the front, and we are beyond. And then we are saying, Oh, Master, can you give us some bread? Can you multiply some bread so that we can eat? That's not happening. That is not happening. That's why Jesus Christ. When he wake up, he look at his disciple, the way they were behaving, he had to shout at them. The scripture you see in Mark 16, there was no Jesus speaking like, I am Jesus, I am told, no, no, no. He was shouting at them. He was saying to them, I have given you the power. I have given you the authority. Go, go, and go and Cast out some demon for me. Go and go all over the world. Cast out demon. Go go and walk on the snake. Go and walk on the scorpion. Even if they give you poison, it will do you nothing. You go. It's not Jesus going and work. No, no, that's that's finished. Jesus did that for Peter, Matt, um, uh, Peter, John, James, and the rest. That's finished. Now is not Jesus anymore going. We are going, and Jesus is following us at the back. We are going, but and then in His name, He will show up. He will do the job. And I repeat, Joshua commanded the army. Joshua commanded the army. Now I am speaking to somebody. If uh, Joshua didn't command them, if Joshua didn't command them, they would have never obeyed. And if they don't obey, you can be, remember, remember, before that, Joshua was leading Israel. They went and they beat them and they killed some of them. Then he had to go back and lay down before God and cry. Why? Because if the commander doesn't give the right commandment, they can kill the army. A commander, a general, can take his army to death if he doesn't give them the proper commandment. That is why there is a time for training. That is why when you go to the army, they change your, the way you look. And then if you have seen the, the soldier, you will see that all of them, almost especially, I'm, when I'm talking about the soldier, I'm talking more about the soldier who respect themselves, uh, of army that respect themselves. Uh. Maybe you can take a video online or some soldier from some funny places, uh, you will see them dancing on the street uh, anyhow. I'm talking about soldier from my country, because if you're here or not, there are some countries that respect, that respect themselves and countries that, does, that doesn't respect themselves. And there's those countries that doesn't respect themselves. That's why they can play with them. And you will see. In countries that respect themselves, when you look at the soldier of those countries, all the soldiers, they look the same. When the soldiers, they wear uniform, there is a way to wear your uniform. They all wear the uniform the same. They all have the same haircut. Why? Because it became a language of soldier. And we call it gun. We call it gun. Everybody, oh, this is a gun, this is a gun. No, 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 no. When you go to the army, every single weapon has a name. There is a, a weapon that's one that can kill a person that's far. There's a weapon that can kill many people. There's a weapon that every single weapon has a name. There is a reason. So that when the, when the chief, the commander will say, 
take this weapon, weapon number 1222, come and use it. Because you can see that this enemy, we can only use a weapon number 136. There are some weapons, because when your, uh, your brother and sister go to war, and they say, it is time for this weapon. You, you need to use that weapon, because if you don't know the name of weapon, you can take a wrong weapon, you use it, and you kill even your brother and your sister who have went already in the field of the enemy. That's why you see that in movie, because that's the only time we have experience of soldier in movies, you see that the people can attack and there will be one staying at the back like a sniper. is shooting one by one, one by one. And those type of things, small example and we go. Those are the type of things. You'll be in church. The pastor can tell you, let us sing this song. And then, and then in some churches, I'm not. In, I know that in your church everything is good. In some churches, you say people, okay, let us sing this song. And the people come to sing, they don't want to sing that song. They say, oh, that song is not pretty. No, no. At the moment, is the commander who's giving you what song to sing. So don't come and be like me. I am a praise and worship leader, and this is my song. This is my story. At the moment, you can sing. This is my story. God first will not be pleased with you because you are not be pleased with your own commander. By singing one wrong song, you can kill people. Not people from the enemy side, but people from your own side. There are many to talk about this. My time is up. I'm going to finish by this. This is for grown-up. The word of God is for grown up. After six months in the church, after six months in the church, you have to say that I want to be a grown up. A grown up, babies, who, who are babies? Baby is this. A baby is when they are playing with the toy. You come and take the toy. The baby starts to cry. Those are baby. A grown up, me as I'm a grown up like this, if I'm playing with a toy, you come and take it from me. I will say, thank you. You took that toy. Let me go and do some. I have, some, I have so many projects to do. But what, what was I even doing with that toy? Is somebody following me? That's the difference be between a baby and a grown-up. Now, if you are a baby, if you are a baby, you cannot lead. If you are a baby, when it becomes a time for secret stuff with God, you cannot participate. It become a fault. It become a fault. If I, it become a fault. If I take all those babies I have in the house, don't want because I, I have I have them in the house. I know, I know. I have, for example, I have Timothy. I know the only thing he loves doing in the house is PlayStation. The only thing he loves doing in the house is PlayStation. He enter PlayStation, chugu, 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 chugu. go to bed. He go to bed. I know him because I'm moving in the house. So. If I take his PlayStation out, he cry. He cry in the house. He cry. If I cut the internet in the house, he cry. I have to know that this is my baby. PlayStation. I cannot take him and say, okay, Timothy, let's go to war. Now it's your turn to cast demon. No, I cannot take him. When I go to a place, let, when they call me, let's go. Oh, pastor, come and pray for me. There are some demon. I, I never take Timothy. I go and I take the evangelist Jean-Marie. Let's go. There are some demon we are going to cast out. Why? Because if I take Timothy from playing PlayStation to casting out demon, I can take the boy, they go there and they kill him. Oh yeah, but when we are in church, it's time to play. Timothy, go and sing. Because I know that we are playing. Go and sing. But when it becomes time to cast demon, I will take the Vajisha Marie, we go to some houses and we cast some demon. When you want to be a baby, no problem. I will go for Timothy. I will buy him for Christmas. What did he add? That's not, that's not a big question. If I ask you, that's not a mathematical What do you think we gave Timothy for Christmas? What do you think Jesus gave to all, the, to all his baby in Christ for Christmas? You don't need mathematics. You don't need a prophet to know the gift that Jesus gave to people. I bless you in the name of Jesus. And I pray for somebody. Let it be a revelation that you are not, you are not a baby Christian. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. You are not to remain a baby Christian. 
to grow up in Christianity, you have to decide it for yourself. Say, mm, I've been in church for six months. Now I want to grow. Oh yes, I've been in church for, for six months. Now those time where I was crying, when they said to me, oh, st stand up, let us pray. You have to say, no, no, no. You have to come to church as a grown-up with a decision. Before pastor say, let us stand up. I will be standing on Baroche. Before they say, let us pray. You, you, before even, what, Brashinda, Brashinda, Rabada, Boshinda, Rabada. When I go to church, I sing all my songs at home. I've sing all my songs. I have my song. I play all my songs. And I go to church. I don't go to church so that somebody will sing song for me. No, no, no. I have sung all my songs. If the key is on place, if the singer is off key, if the singer doesn't want to sing, I am a Christian. I know where YouTube is. I know how to download song. So you think that I will go be me a grown up before I go to church? Be, I will go to church for, so that somebody can sing for me so that I can worship God. No, 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 no. I know where YouTube is. I know how to download song. I am a grown up. The same way I can go to YouTube and watch all the other stuff, that's the same way I can go to YouTube to have all my praise and worship. Before I go to church, I am singing my praise and worship. So if the choir doesn't want to sing on the Sunday, praise them. Praise them. We praise the choir. Oh, Father God, we praise. Oh, we sing praise for this choir team. If, if, I don't know. I don't know if, you, if you've been. I know some people have never been to church. I have been to churches. You go to churches. The choir leader doesn't want to sing. So I, I, I came to preach. So you think that I wait for the prayer to sing so that I can have my preaching. No, I know where YouTube is. If I feel like listening to some reggae praise and worship, I will hear it at home. And when I go to church, if they got on the keyboard, you know that now we have people on the keyboard. And sometimes they don't feel like, where's, where's my transport? They don't come. I will not come to church if I, I know. I know. Yeah, we need to pray. All the people who pray, they pray for us on keyboard to pray the transport for them. It's a responsibility also for the church. But on that day, if the church doesn't have transport for the guy on the keyboard. So, and then there's no keyboard. And then I'll be like, oh God, there, there is no keyboard. I cannot preach. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen. My time is up. Let us go to Pastor Dode. God has spoke to uh, to you to uh, today. We are not uh, uh, baby. We grow up already. That's we need to uh, be strong to eat the, the great things and to pray to help to pray to pray for someone. Also, I will just go to uh, Patricia uh, and experience for the song. Uh, 